Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, your host and the Private Money Authority, giving you a special welcome, especially if this is your first time to join us on the show. You may be tuning in on iTunes or Google Play or one of our YouTube channels or our other platforms. But nonetheless, we're just so excited to have you here with us. Uh, we launched a little over a year ago and we're approaching fast to 200,000 downloads and listens. So we appreciate you making that a success for us. And we talk about all things real estate investing here on the show. We talk about single family houses, uh, talk about commercial, we talk about land. We talk about any of the different ways that you can make money in real estate. Now, one thing that's really made this show very popular is I've had just amazing guests here on the show, and today is no different. But before I bring my guest on, and by the way, he is an expert. He's going to be talking about Google Ads, Facebook, CRMs, keeping up with all your contacts. So you definitely want to stick around for my guests. But before I bring him on, just to let you know, if you're brand new, I'm known as the Private Money Authority because... Ten and a half years ago, I was cut off from the banks with no notice on getting my deals funded, and I found a better way very quickly. And so this world of private money has got nothing to do with hard money lenders or traditional mortgage companies or banks or your credit, et cetera. It's about getting money from individuals. So when I was cut off way back in 2009, in less than 90 days, I was able to attract over $2 million in private money. And we've raised a lot since then. And since 2011, I've been instrumental in teaching thousands of real estate investors across the nation on how to get funding for their deals exactly that way. In fact, my business model is made up of four pillars, how to find deals before other real estate investors know about them, how to get them funded, how to flip them fast and sell them fast, and then how to automate the business to where you're running your business and your business is not running you. I actually run the business in less than 10 hours per week. So anyway, if you would like to learn about how to get more funding for your deals without relying on your hard money lender or your banks or mortgage brokers, I've got a webinar that is ready for you to go learn the five steps to getting funding for your deals. And that webinar is located at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Well, on with today's show. I'm so excited to have my friend Kyle Allen here on the show with me. Let me tell you just a little bit about Kyle and we'll bring him on. Kyle, first of all, is way too smart to be as young as he is, but that's beside the point. Anyway, Kyle started his first business when he was only 18 years old and he was hustling around, putting out signs, house signs for real estate agents in the Arizona market, running two companies, real estate best buddy. Uh, that's a digital marketing agency. And also another company, Zeal Designs, which is a website design agency. Anyway, his passion since 2018 has been wanting to help people any way that he can, even in the smallest way, making a difference in their business. He works with people on showing them how to do the Google ads and, and effective Facebook ads for their own business if they want to learn it themselves. He also has a, a done-for-you service with his own staff of people. They can just get it done for you. But Kyle is just a simple smile away from saving and helping someone change their life. With that, a very special welcome to Kyle. Kyle, welcome to the show, man. Hey Jay, how's it going? It's it's absolutely a pleasure, and you're honestly too kind uh, for all of your your nice feedback that you're saying. And I am not as smart as you say I am. I'm just someone who just loves to just work and just learn as much as I possibly can. So you're you know? humble, anyway. I, I <laughs> at our last mastermind meeting, I saw all that detail stuff that you presented during your presentation about Facebook and squeeze pages and. And, you know, you're fantastic at getting organic traffic. You also know how to do the Facebook paid ads. So, yes, you are as smart as I said you are. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I'm, it's definitely a pleasure. And glad that we were able to connect at the last mastermind. Because I learned a lot in, like, your whole, your whole like, in-depth, 
detail about how you guys do everything with your show is I, I love it. And it just, it geeked me out. Right. Cause that's, that's <laughs> my, that's my bread and butter right there. So everyone has their own little genius that they, that they have. You definitely have a great genius on how to get that private money. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. So, <laughs> so you won't have to go back too many years to tell me this story. <laughs> So, so, you know, you, you were, you know, not too long ago, you were out running around putting out real estate signs for agents and et cetera. And also you had two other businesses you were up and running, but what drew you into the real estate investing space itself? Yeah. So what kind of drew me into the, the space? So when I first started putting out signs, we were putting out bandit signs for real estate agents like crazy. And I always was asking them because I was doing my digital advertising. I was like, Hey, like, this is what you're paying to put out these bandit signs plus the signs. Like, what's your ROI looking like? Right. Just because like me being a marketing agency, I wanted to give my customers the best ROI possible. So I was trying to put the, the, the signs in different areas that would get better traffic and all this sorts of stuff. But the bandit signs weren't really working. So I asked him, I was like, Hey, I've been doing a lot of stuff with traditional real estate. Let me start to help out with you on your investing business. And then from there, I just met a couple different local local guys that I started doing some advertising with and we started getting some great results. So that's kind of what drew me into it. I used to work with Dub Hopkins, who's another guy that's in CG with us. And I worked with him when I was like 16 years old. And I always looked and I was like, like he was on every TV commercial possible, like everywhere. And like, I remember my grandpa, who was a, who was a real estate agent, told me, he's like, Kyle, you need to learn as much as you can from people who are real estate investing because they are growing assets and they're just accumulating money that is a longevity that is so hard to destruct. And that's one of the things that I kind of just really stuck in my head for a long time. And ever since then, I just have been fascinated by real estate and, and investing just because I knew how like concrete the whole industry is. So Yeah. Well, now, when you said you were out running around putting out bandit signs, was that for the real estate investors or realtors? Investors. Yeah. And then when I think out. bandit signs, I'm thinking we buy houses fast, fast cash, or, you know, that type of thing. Yep. So we did bandit signs for investors. We put out open house signs for real estate agents, full nine yards. Long story short, I, I tried to scale that business. I had five guys working for me, putting out signs all over Tucson and Phoenix. And it just got to a point where I was like, this isn't making my customers money, right? I'm not helping them out. I'm not doing what I should be doing. So then I just switched and I was like, hey, if you want to use us, right? Use us for a digital advertising. This is what we'll watch you get your money back in your pockets. So that's right, right. Like my biggest thing is like, I don't want to have like a conscious where I lost some of money, right? I think of myself as like an investor with your marketing dollars. So if I can invest your marketing dollars and get you grow your money, right? You're going to be really happy with me. If not, it looks bad on me and I feel like I almost owe you money because I lost right, it. Right. That's kind of, my, kind of my take on it. Okay. So why don't we talk about Facebook first? Okay. Yeah. So Facebook has made a lot of changes to their platform as far as what works, what doesn't work, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. And so, you know, it's been changing. I'm sure it will continue to change. But how about share some of your strategies and concepts with my audience as to what's working on Facebook ads now? So let's start with, so do you help real estate investors locate only motivated sellers or are you helping, helping them locate rent to own buyers? What are you helping them find? Uh, we haven't done any rent to own buyers. Motivated sellers is our bread and butter where we spend most of our time. Is we, we've noticed that some of them can turn into those kind of like those rentals for them too as well. But um, motivated sellers is primarily where we spend most of our time focusing on. Okay. So how about share with me and everybody, what is your, what's your strategy? I mean, I know you're just not going to put a Facebook ad up there and, and yeah. let that do its thing. So I mean, do you build out or teach people how to build out their own marketing funnels, you know, how to attract people to raise their hand and, you know, opt into something and give their kind of information? What are your successful Facebook marketing funnels looking like now that are working? Yeah, so 
everything that we do in marketing, we try to keep as simple as possible. So most new marketers or anyone who's do, new to real estate investing or anyone who's kind of starting to use Facebook for the first time, what they try to do is they try to overcomplicate this whole problem, right? It needs to be all of these different layers and stages, but we just try to keep it as basic as simple uh, or as basic as possible. Because the more simple it is, the customers are going to interact with it. So I'll give you guys basically a lowdown of what we all do from start to finish and kind of how we work work it out. And I'll kind of touch on a little bit of some of the other things that we'll we'll touch on too as well throughout this podcast. But one of the major things that we do is we just try to collect their information right away, right? So we just have a simple thing out there. It's basically, so it's like four different little houses, right? So we have houses and then we have like a kitchen inside. And it basically like with this thing, so like a, sim, a single image doesn't work as well as it used to. Um, it used to work all the time. And, and nowadays it's, it's just overpopulated, right? It's just flooded. Video definitely works really well, especially with retargeting people. But what we found is like this, like four, like literally if you guys go to canva.com uh, and you just get like a frame that has like four different little pieces on there and just throw in local houses, either the houses you bought or that are on MLS, if you get access and some like requests from like the agent who has that house, you can basically use that, put it on Facebook and then you just have like simple things, right? Oh, what was that website again? I missed it. Oh, you're okay. It's okay. <laughs> so it's C A N V A. Yep. Canva.com. Yeah. As in, it's like short for canvas, but Canva. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. C A N V A. So, so, <laughs> so what does that website do? Yeah. Think about it like Photoshop, but very, very simple. I've taught people who are 60 years plus old how to use that. It's one of the easiest things to use. It's just like a design tool. So it just helps the design. And when we do these designs, right, there's no elegant, right? Some like looking like Apple, like product designs that we're putting out there for these real estate. And that's just very simple, right? They're houses with like, hey, are you looking to sell fast? Super, super simple ads, right? Think about it as like if you had a billboard and someone's driving a car past going 50 plus miles an hour, right? You got to make sure you catch their attention and understand what the message is right away. So did I hear you say you're not doing one picture in these Facebook ads? You're putting how many pictures? We do four per per thing and we're not doing four like pictures that are all together it's one picture that has four pictures inside of it gotcha yeah. so it's like one picture and then you have like these other pictures either overlaid or inlaid exactly yep so what you're I, what you're attempting to do which obviously is working is you're trying to give a pattern interrupt to get people to stop because these are ads are, are these ads are in their news feed right yep so that's a hundred percent accurate we're basically getting them to to stop and look at it because they're like, oh, that's different than what they're traditionally seeing. And then it catches their attention. And then we have a chance for them to read what the copy is. Right. And that's kind of the second most important part is, is the ad copy. Okay. So step one is create a Facebook ad that gets their attention and stops them from scrolling, you know, right on down through their phone. So step one is get attention, stop them. Step two is the copy. Go ahead. Yeah, so the copy is literally call out what their, their pain points are, right? So a lot of the times we want to always talk about as a company, right? As we're marketing as a company, oh, I buy homes for cash. I'm going to close on your house in seven days. That's not what this person is feeling right now, right? We got to be very customer centric and focus on what the customer is feeling, right? Are they going through a divorce? Are they going through a foreclosure? What types of things are going in their life right now that you can call out directly and get them to go, Hey, I need help with my divorce right now, right? My wife is going crazy. She's she's kicked me out of the house. We need to sell this so I can possibly at least pay some rent, right? For for another like place that I can stay for a little bit. So you got to focus about what the customer actually is dealing with right now and then call them out and be like, "Hey, I can't help you," right? Just fill out the new information before or below. And the third step is basically using lead forms. Okay, so before we get to step three, so let's hang out on these pain points. Will you speak to different pain points in the same ad, or will you speak to just one pain point per ad? Uh, we usually, so on like the first ad, we basically do a, a broad. So we usually do about four to three. Kind of just depends on what we're seeing back and like feedback. But it's best to test. And like the great part about Facebook ads is that you can test multiple different variations of this ad, right? So we can test like on the first step, right? We can test different types of houses that look amazing for people. 
And then, then we can test different copies, right? So we could test different call to actions. And that's one of the big things. So like we have, we have certain ones that work amazing that are just for divorces, right? And we have certain ones that are, are great for just someone who's a motivated seller who just needs to get out of their house fast or, or maybe someone who just inherited in a property and needs to get out of that and wants to sell that house fast too, because they know the market's great right now. So there's all those different types of things, but a lot of the times we like to, to keep it broad because the broader you are, the, the larger you're going to cast your net out and catch more fish. And then through those fish, you can sort out and actually talk to them about what their problems are, kind of where like the CRM system kind of helps to, to figure out what their problems are after they come in and you cast that net. Gotcha. So step one, get their attention. Step two is the copy that you just talked about. And then step three is how you're going to capture the lead. Yeah. So if you guys are familiar with like Facebook ads, if you go on there uh, to business.facebook, if you've never started a Facebook, just business.facebook.com, you can go on there, create an ad profile. And then when you start your ads, right, you're going to be an ads manager. If you just go on there and you have a, it's called lead forms. So this lead form basically is Facebook's landing page. So opposed to sending them over to your website where there's a bajillion different distractions, what it does is it basically gives them one thing, just like a landing page, but it auto populates their information. So that's the huge thing is the auto populated the information because Facebook is a huge database, whether you like it or not, they are. And what happens is that you sign up with Facebook with your name, your phone number and your email. So Facebook knows that all of those, that information is correct because you wouldn't be able to be, be on Facebook without authenticating one of those. So with you going in there and, and saying like, hey, this is my phone number, it allows us to then make sure that's accurate information so we can actually reach people. Because with like Google AdWords, for saying we send people to landing pages, we get a lot of false numbers, a lot of false email addresses. And that this kind of eliminates some of that because Facebook does that kind of pre-scrubbing for us. Okay, well, that's a big benefit. Yeah, it's a it's a huge benefit. It's one of the things that, I mean, especially if you're paying cost per lead, right? You want to make sure at least you're getting valuable information opposed to someone who's like, oh, well, it, it's just another another dead lead that I paid maybe a hundred bucks for that lead. And, and I can't even get the right phone number to, to call them. So. Right. So what reason do you give people to fill out their contact information? What's the call to action as to why someone in your ads would want to give their contact information? I mean, yeah, I mean, a motivated seller wants to sell their house, but is that it? It's That's primarily what the call to action is. I mean, is there like, you know, some kind of offer like, hey, you know, we can guarantee you an offer within so many hours or so many days? Or is there some type of offer or incentive for them to really take action and, and give their contact information? Yeah, so we actually don't have any like time restrictions like, hey, like this offer is limited or anything like that. It's just, hey, if you're looking to sell your house fast, we have an option for you. And kind of the great part with a lot of the investors that I work with and even the investors who aren't, um, what we kind of do is piece them together with a real estate agent too as well. So what they can do is then they can take those leads and then actually use them if they don't turn out to be a motivated seller. Right. So like right. Say, they have too much. They don't have enough equity in the house to, to actually sell it at a discounted rate because they need to pay back that mortgage. It, it gives them a viable option to do something else. So we don't really have a call to action where it's like, hey, get an offer within 48 hours or 24 hours or anything like that. We just keep it very nice and simple. Like, hey, if you're looking to sell your house for fast, like for cash, then opt in. If not, like, I'm sorry, we're, like it's not the end of the world. It's important to definitely get those people who are ready to move fast. But primarily what we're doing is we're building this database, right? What I want more investors to think about is building a database that is theirs instead of always buying databases. Because those databases cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Opposed, you can be actually getting real people that are in your market that are starting to sell for dollars. Opposed to you just buying these databases that are like maybe 70% accurate, right? You could be building mm -hmm. that are more efficient. And also, like, if you think about how Facebook and Google got huge, they got huge by building a database. They didn't get huge right. by trying to sell people something right away. So right. Yeah, we, that's what, like, also one of the things that I want more people to understand throughout the whole process of advertising is you're going to get richer the more data that you have on people. 
So if you understand that you can get more photos of people's houses, you have more numbers that you can start to read in your local market, the more successful that you're going to be. So that's kind of why why we do it like that. Yeah, and it's sort of like any type of marketing. I mean, the, the money and the asset is in the list. Exactly. Yep. Particularly when it's your list. <laughs> yeah, and it's very valuable when you have a list because you that's traction that you can control, right? So like you have probably a list for, for all the people that are maybe on the podcast or maybe anyone, right? So you can send that list anything that you want, right? So if you have a new product that you want to sell or maybe you want something that you could help them out, Hey, you can then sell, you can basically push that list, whether it's a text message, an email, right? Services that are essentially free to use opposed to like, Hey, I buy like a mailing list and now I need to mail that list. And each piece of mail is 35 cents each. And now I need to mail that to, to 20,000 people, right? That gets expensive, especially when you're doing month in and month out for advertising as opposed to just like, Hey, I can, I can do a ringless voicemail to all these people on my list that I have who already know me right 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 so so on this step they opted in so the ad did the job got their attention the copy was brilliant it caused them to opt in their uh, to give their contact information now what happens next now what happens next is that they get pushed over to our crm system so what we use is we use zapier and podio those are probably everyone is aware of those if you're not zapier is basically an integration that pushes some piece of information to another system, right? So it's just an, an API key. And what this all does is it helps us to then get their information and then we can contact them. So we have we have a rule with everyone that we work with that you should be following up with all of these leads within two minutes. Sounds outrageous, right? Because well, that's an important thing you just said right there. We, you, we should be following up with them within two minutes. So how do you do that? There's this uh, system that's called uh, Lead Response. So it's called Speak to Leads. It's actually one of the things that we just started implementing. So what happens is as soon as they submit that form on Facebook, it gets sent basically to your phone. So you get then a call where it's like dial number two, and then it's putting you directly in contact with that person. And I've had companies do it to me. And I know that our our ISA who, who handles a lot of stuff, Sorry, Kyle. What's an ISA? No, you're okay. Yeah, um, an ISA is an inbound sales associate. Inbound sales associate. Okay. Want to make sure everybody's on the same. So an inbound sales associate is they're answering the phone, right? Yep. So they're taking any inbound calls and all that stuff. So technically this is an inbound call because they're opting into our information, right? They want to learn more about what we can offer them. Yeah. So we people on and then we start we basically our first thing is we ask for photos right away as soon as we we get their information we're like hey mr seller or mrs seller we'd love to get some photos of your property so we could learn more do you mind just texting me a couple photos so we can give you an accurate price range or price offer on your house and then that way we know if they're serious right and sometimes right they might not be at home or they might be away or they're busy at work or whatever the case might be but we know who's serious and who's not serious after that and then the people who are not serious, we can just continue to work on them, set up those drip campaigns that are all automated that that work for you, right? That's how you're able to work 10 hours, right? Is because you have the systems in place. Correct. So, so let's make sure we get this understanding. Of course, I know I've got a lot of people out there that are watching or listening and they're going to want to talk to you. And quite frankly, they don't want to learn how to do all this stuff. They just want you to do it, you and your team to do it for them yeah, it, and get the yeah. results. But let's understand what's going on. So someone opts in with their contact information. That immediately notifies somebody on the team, a virtual assistant, somebody that, hey, somebody has just opted in and given their contact information. Now, is whoever's getting those notifications, how do they call that person like immediately? Uh, That's with uh, Speak to Leads. So, so, so is that like they get like a text and they can like hit one and it automatically dials their number or something? A hundred percent. Yep. So it's actually, it's a call that the, the ISA gets, the inbound sales associate. So they get a call directly, or if you're the acquisitions guy, this could go directly to you too as well, is that you get a call right away and it's like dial two to get in contact with Jay. And I just dial two. And I get in contact with Jay right away. Okay, so that's not the software notifying you. That's the actual lead that's wanting to talk to somebody right now. Is that correct? No, that's the software that's basically 
So the software is connect. So like the lead form that goes in there, your name, phone number, and email, is it basically grabs that information. It grabs the phone number and it calls you first. And it's like, do you want to speak with Jay? Gotcha. So and that's the that's the, um, that's the salesperson or acquisitionist making an outbound call using the software to the people that just opted in. Correct. Yep. So yeah. that's a huge one. And we, we use slide broadcast, which is another huge one. Basically helps to eliminate a lot of the calls, right? So the people that we call right away, we don't get a response with. What we'll do is we'll separate them and then we'll put them into a, a slide broadcast so we can drop a voicemail all at the same time and not have to, to say the same voicemail 30 times a day. Or so, a slide, so a slide broadcast is it only goes, it bypasses them answering and it only goes to their, to their um, voice messages, right? Correct. Yeah. And you just got to be a little bit careful about that depending on what state you're in and and all that stuff. I'm not a legal expert by any means, so don't ask me on that. <laughs> sure, sure. And of course, along with that, you got a lot of people out there that don't listen to their voice messages or their voice mailbox is full. Yeah. So do you have a do you have a follow up campaign with either texting or emailing? Yeah, so we primarily do a lot of our follow ups on just text message marketing. Your email is spammed beyond belief. I personally have like three emails that are just spam emails that I sign up for stuff and I don't have to look at it at all. Right. I, I'm a marketer too, so I, I even I, I do this myself because it's just like you go to your inbox and you, every single day you got hundreds of emails that just came in, right? And from all different types of places. So you, your phone, I mean, it's like on, on average, it's like in 98, 98% of text messages are read within two minutes. Right. Which is huge. Yeah. So let's so, drill down on those follow up texts. So yeah. how soon do they get a text? How many do they get? How long does the follow up text campaign go? Yeah. So how many they get? So that's actually a great question. And it, it kind of varies on the motivation of the person. Right. So if we have like a call on them and they're a high motivation, they'll get a lot less text messages from us because we don't want to kind of like bombard you and push you away. We want to make sure that you are nurturing you a proper way, opposed to someone who we haven't gotten in contact with, right? Who's a cold lead. Most of the leads that you're going to get, uh, it doesn't matter what source you use from Facebook to Google to mailing to TV. Uh, it doesn't matter what source you're using. Right. You're going to get a lot of cold leads. So with all of those cold leads, you're going to want to, for like, this is kind of my, like kind of my version of it. And everyone has their own different ways. So the first basically two weeks, we try to hit them hard, right? So you got text messages, emails, uh, phone calls that are basically going out almost every single day because like we want to hit that person to get them on the phone because they just filled out something that's saying that they want to sell. And if they go to someone else, guess what? That could be 30 grand out of our pockets. Exactly. And I've, I've discovered as well, you know, if you don't get, if you don't reach out to them like immediately and you got somebody on your team and you're not following up until this afternoon after they reached out this morning, they don't even remember they called you. They don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah, they, they have no idea because the, the, the customers are opting into a lot of different stuff, right? Because they want instant gratification now. Everyone wants it now, 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 now. So if you're not going to give it now, guess what? They're going to go find a source that does. Everyone That's wants right. It. That's, yeah. What you just said was brilliant. If you can't give it to them now, they're going to find somebody and they're going to continue to search until they find somebody that does. Yeah. It's it's true. It it's it's, it's scary because everyone it's it's what Amazon. I, I don't want to say Amazon created it, but they've they've learned what the customer wants, and everyone compares everything to Amazon, right? I want it shipped to me tomorrow. If I don't get it shipped to me tomorrow, guess what? I'm not getting it. Like I'm gonna go. To, I'm not gonna get it at all. I won't even go to the store. And that's even kind of how people are starting to sell houses nowadays. They're like, I want to sell my house like now. Like I don't need someone to tell me like this, this or that. Like I want to do it now when I want. When I want, the customer wants. So you need to be very cautious of that and be more customer focused than than what you're focusing on right now. Because a lot of investors that I've I've worked with are are always about what's in it for the business and not what's in it for the customers. And it's hard to tiptoe that balance, especially when when you're running the numbers and stuff like that. But if you focus a lot more on the customers, or you just have a marketing person who does focus on the customers, and then you guys collaborate on what works together, you'll be more successful. After the first two weeks, what we basically do is we hit them with a text message about twice a week, right? 
And we give them a call like every now and then, right? It might be two, three times a week. And this is all continuing to go forward until we get them on the phone. And when we get them on the phone, all that other stuff stops because now we've got contact, right? Yep, it stops. It either stops completely because they're like, hey, I'm, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm not looking to sell my house, right? Or they're like, all right, cool. I want to move forward. I want to get an offer. I want you guys to come out, whatever the case might be. So then it kind of stops that process. And then we then we put them on a different campaign. You should primarily have like three different campaigns, right? A warm, you should have a hot and then a cold. So the cold there one you should focus a lot on. Everyone wants to focus on the warm and the hot. But those two, like those people are like really close to the whole, like your sales or acquisition guys should be able to just tap it in, right? It shouldn't need a lot of, a lot of force and push to get them to, to convert. The cold ones is where marketers should spend more time or business owners, because that's where a lot of your money is going to be in the future in the pipeline. So that's where yeah. I, that's where I personally spend a lot of my time focusing when I work with new businesses. Gotcha. Man, that's, that is brilliant. Well, guess what, Kyle? We're going to have to talk about Google AdWords on a future show because we are out of time, <laughs> man. Can you believe? But that, know, was, right? that was a great overview of step one, step two, step three on the Facebook campaigns. So I know I got a lot of people that want to reach out to you and continue the conversation and either have a, you know, a strategy call with them on how they can start to implement this or, you know, consider hiring your company on a done for you basis. So uh, how can people um, how can people reach out to you, man? Yeah. So if you guys want to reach out to me directly, my email address is Kyle at realestatebestbuddy.com. And my phone number is 480-338-7744. You guys can reach out either way or you can go visit our website. It's www.realestatebestbuddy.com. That's basically the easiest ways to reach out to us. If you're looking for like a website or anything like that, it's zeldesign.io, a little bit different than .com. And that's that's one of the ways you guys can reach out to us. If you're looking for anything like that, because realistically, it, it's hard to do all this by yourself. But if you want a process, I can literally give you guys a step-by-step -step strategy call. Like I'm an open book. Like I, I love to help people, right? Like that's kind of my purpose in life. I don't get anything out of making money, right? Like it doesn't really give me the same joy as helping someone. So I, if you guys want to set up a, a free strategy call, I'm willing to give my time and, and just all the resources that I know and, and help you guys out too as well. well. That's great, Kyle. So let's give out that contact information one more time. So your email address is Kyle, K-Y-L-E, at? Uh, real, real estate. Best buddy, yep. So Kyle, K-Y-L-E, at realestatebestbuddy.com. And your phone number is? It's 480-338-3387. Four, so and then 7744. 7744. Your website is realestatebestbuddy.com. And then on web design, uh, what was that website on web design? It was uh, Zell Design. How do you spell that? How do you spell uh, it? It's uh, Z E A L D E S I G N dot I O. Oh, Sorry. so dot I O. Yeah, dot I O. Yep. Not dot com. No, sir. Yeah. Dot I O. That's the first yeah. I O I've heard of. I'm, I'm familiar with dot C O and dot com and dot org, but the dot I O is the first. It's going to come along, watch. Okay, well, I'm not surprised you're ahead of the curve for sure. So anyway, Kyle, thank you so much for um, taking the time to be on the show here with me today. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jay. Like, It's been a pleasure to, to get to connect with you, and, and I'm definitely looking forward to, to possibly being on a future show and talking about Google AdWords too. Yes, well. I'll have you back to talk on Google Ads for sure. Thank you so much, Kyle. Okay, thank you so much. You guys have a good rest of your day. And with that, folks, thank you for joining in on another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm your host and the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Until the next show, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.